Hi there guys, got a video here for you today on the BSA R10. Now in this one what we're going to be doing is a full strip down and rebuild of the rifle. We're also going to be installing a humor regulator. Now the regulator itself is a nice and simple installation and it doesn't require the rifle to be completely stripped but I thought it would be nice to show on the channel just so you can see exactly what's inside an R10. And if you didn't see my previous video on the R10, we do have a smooth twist barrel put in this rifle. This was originally a 2.2, although we've converted it to 177 using a smooth twist barrel. With that all said and done, we can start the disassembly. The first thing we need to do is get all the air out of the rifle. So as you can see there, the rifle is pressurised. What we're going to do is burp it. So this is a rifle that you can't just unscrew the bottle on. If you do that, there'll be an almighty great bang and you'll probably destroy the O-ring that's on the neck of the bottle. So what we've got to do is a couple just light turns like so and then we'll dry fire the rifle in a safe direction looking to see if the pressure in the rifle significantly drops. So after a couple dry fires we see that the pressure inside the rifle hasn't dropped significantly. What we'll do now, another couple turns and do the same process again. And that time that was enough to deseat the one-way valve on the rifle and we can see that we've run the rifle out there. If you don't unscrew the bottle far enough it doesn't deseat the one-way valve that's in the end of the bottle so it continues to supply the rifle with air. But all it takes is a couple extra turns or half turns and that allows us to unscrew the bottle nice and safely. If you unscrew it all in one go there's a good chance that you'll probably ruin this o-ring on the end here and as I said before there'll be all, an almighty great bang. Next we'll remove the stock and that's simply done by removing the stock bolt in the bottom. That's done using a 5mm allen key. So I'll stick the stock over to a safe position. Next up we can remove this front block and that's quite simply done using a 5mm allen key in this hole here so you see the bolt there that allows us to pull this front section off and then gently pull this block out here. Right then, with the front block off we can see the regulator. This part here is the regulator, although it is fitted with an anti-tamper cap over the end so that you can't adjust the regulator from the factory. I believe this is only fitted to sub-12 models, but it's not necessary to remove this cap in order to remove the regulator. All we're going to do is put this piece in the vise, grip it nice and tightly and unscrew it. So I'll take you over to the vise and I'll show you what I mean. Right, so we've got the block here over by the vise. As you can see this anti-tamper cap on the end rotates without actually unscrewing the regulator. So what we're going to do is rotate it so that the pin is off to one side. Then we're just going to simply put it in the vise. I've got some soft jaws in the vise, aluminium pieces to stop it from marring. Do that up nice and tight, then simply unscrew the block. Being nice and careful as there is a ball bearing in the end here. And there's also a spring in the end of the block, so nice and careful as you take that off. But as you can see, that's the standard R10 regulator removed without actually having to remove this end cap. Here we are back over at the bench and we have the old regulator fully removed. So as you saw there we didn't need to take this anti-tamper cover cap off and we just removed the old regulator entirely. So we're going to be needing no parts from this regulator, it's just a straight swap so we can put this to one side as we won't be needing it anymore. We do still have a couple of things in the block that we need to take out. First is this little spring here, so we'll stick that to one side. Second is this brass piece here and the o-ring on the end of it. So my one came out as one unit as you can see there o-ring, brass piece, neither of which we'll need for the humor regulator. And if you didn't want to watch the full disassembly and then the rebuild of the rifle and just want to install your humor reg you can just drop it in the hole, screw it in and then put this block back on the rifle. Nothing else needs to be taken off, nothing else needs to be changed. However, we're going to be doing a full disassembly, so I'm not going to be installing the humor reg just yet. As a side note, if you see this tag on the end here, this paper, sort of, it's worn off of mine, but it's a pressure 
indicator, just go ahead and take that off if it's in any way loose or going to fall off. If it comes off when it's in the rifle it can end up in the regulator and whilst that's never happened to me I have seen a picture of that happen on the forum. So if this piece is loose just take it off before it gets caught in the reg. But we're going to be sticking this to one side and continuing on with the disassembly. First thing we're going to do is remove the gauge on the bottom. So I'm just going to be using an adjustable spanner for this. These are typically not that tight. Unscrew in the gauge and then we do see a, see a seal in the bottom there. I'm not going to be taking mine out because this seal is working nice and properly. But if you needed to get yours out, that's where it is. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to take these two screws out here. So these can be done up, done up quite tight from the factory. There's the first one there. They are just screws with miniature doughty washers on the bottom. So we'll stick them to one side. Uh, if your rifle was leaking from either one of those, just replace the mini doughty washer. Next thing we're going to do is remove this brass piece here, and that's done using a 22mm spanner. Now these can really be done up tight from the factory, so nice and carefully just crack it loose and unscrew it. And there that is there. We do have an O-ring on the end here, this Delwin piece here, and we do also have this set piece here. Now I'm not going to be taking this apart any further as it is set from the factory. This um, depth here is set as it needs to be the right distance out in order to open the one-way valve on the bottle. So I'm just going to be leaving mine as is. And next we can take this little brass piece off here and that's done using a 12mm spanner. It's nice and carefully cracking it loose and then unscrewing it does have a ball bearing beneath it so just be careful as you take it off. As you can see there, there's the ball bearing in the end. It does have an o-ring around the ball bearing as well. If we tip the ball bearing out, just put that to one side, we see the seal in the base there. So I'm not going to be taking mine out as it is still working, but that's where it is if you need to take it out. That's the front block there fully disassembled. Now we can start work on the block. First thing we're going to do is remove this little stock stub here. This is the part that the stock bolt goes bolts into. To do that, I'm just going to be using a adjustable spanner, cracking it loose, and then undoing it by hand. So there that piece is there. Next thing we're going to do is remove the trigger. That's done using a 3mm Allen key in these two bolts here. So one at the back, one at the front. The back one is covered over by an anti-tamper plug from the factory. And to get that plug out what you need to do is drill through it using sort of a 4mm drill bit. And then using an allen key through the hole you can loosen the trigger, trigger bolt and what that will do is push the plug up. And when the trigger's loose you can just turn it over and bang the screw out and that will push the plug out with it. I've already done it on this rifle, so we can remove the trigger entirely. Next up we can separate the two halves of the block. So first thing we're going to do is remove the bolt handle. That's done in the end here with a 3mm allen key. And take the entire bolt assembly out. Next, using a flat bladed screwdriver we need to undo this bolt at the back here. Nice and careful. Move this cap piece here. And that exposes this screw in the bottom. What we can do then is use a 3mm Allen key and loosen that. It's always a good idea just to put your finger over the cap as when you take this out, this back cap will pop off. There we have it. So there's that back cap coming off. We'll disassemble this further in a minute. But there we have the hammer spring and the hammer is still in the base of the rifle. We'll take that out very shortly. For now though, we'll just push this top screw out using an allen key. Just in the end there. Push it out so it doesn't get lost or caught up. And we go to remove the bolt sleeve. So there's the bolt there. Next up, I'm going to remove the hammer spring weight that's in the back of my rifle. That's not in all rifles, it's just in some, but my one was fitted it from the factory. 
the next thing we can do is remove this pin and the hammer. So in the back there you can see there's a little allen key slot and using a 3mm allen key in the back there we can loosen that and that will allow us to pull this pin out and the hammer and its shuttle should pop out as one unit. Is this red piece in the end and that's just a hammer spring guard and this is our hammer. So I'll stick all this to one side. Right then, with the back cap off we see this anti-tamper cap that's fitted on the end here. Now this is normally Loctited and done up real tight from the factory. So what I did to get mine off was I removed it like so from the rifle using a hot air gun. I heated it up to break the Loctite. Then I made myself a little split collet just fit over the back there that I could clamp in the vise and that gripped this outer part here nice and tightly then we could undo it so my one's loose and just comes off nice and easily there is the hammer spring adjuster in the back also and that's just split so you can use a big flat bladed screwdriver and adjust it as you need to but that's how I removed my piece we can now bring the block back then we can reinstall the bolt handle Turn it up with a 3mm Allen key. What we can do now is rotate the bolt and pull it out like so. Then from this angle, using something nice and soft like a piece of plastic, we can push on the inside delrin part there. So as you can see this shell goes back and forth. So we just push that to one side. And from the top here we can see that exposes a bolt in the end. So using a 3mm allen key, we can loosen the bolt. And as you're doing this, the two halves of the block will separate. So just be nice and careful. And now with this screw loose, we can flip the rifle over and remove this bottom piece here. Being nice and careful as there is a number of springs and ball bearings on the underside here. So we have a spring and a ball for the ball detent on the pellet probe. We also have a spring and a ball over here for the magazine latch. So first thing we're going to do is remove the spring for the ball detent and also the spring for the magazine catch and then using a little stack of magnets we'll remove the front ball bearing like so and also the back one. Although in this rifle it's a stainless steel one so a magnet won't work on it so we'll just tip it over and gently tap it out. Next we can pull this magazine latch out, like so, and then that allows us to remove the transfer port. Now that is there. Next up we'll remove the barrel, and that's done with a 2mm allen key and these two screws here. Now these don't need to be done out all the way, although bringing them a fair way out so that the barrel can be pulled out nice and easily. Next we can remove the pellet probe, that's done with a 2.5mm allen key, just in the end there. Removing the screw, and then if we pull the bolt back, we can remove the banjo bolt. Like so. Then the pellet probe can be pulled out, along with this plastic piece in the back here. So this is the pellet probe sheath. Then we also have the next plastic piece here. Which can just be pushed out the back of the block. And that's the top of the block fully disassembled. We could take this plate off here but I'm not going to bother as it's just a cover piece so that the magazine doesn't be pushed out the other end. But there we have it there, there's the top half of the block fully disassembled. If we bring back the bottom half of the block, we can, if we push this o-ring back in the hole, we can remove these two halves here. So this piece is the back half where the hammer rides. As you can see my one is honed, I did hone that just to make so that the hammer rides up there nice and smoothly. Then we have this front piece here. So this is the valve. 
it just simply unscrews like so this part can be put to one side it does have two o-rings on it but we're not going to be replacing them and there we have it there next up we can unscrew this back cap so if these are tight you can put a pair of circlet pliers in the holes there and twist it to remove it although this one isn't that tight take the cap off there this black plastic pill here is a homemade thing that's just a spacer to give a little extra valve return spring pressure so there's the valve spring there and the valve can just be pushed out from this side using an allen key so there's the valve there that's just the knockoff valve nice simple design so we can stick that to one side there's the valve pretty much fully disassembled we could take this snap ring out of the end here and there is a PTFE or sort of hard plastic seal in there and that grips around the end of the valve pin and seals it off so the air doesn't leak back through the hammer tube but if I'm honest with you I've lost my small snap ring pliers so I can't get that out easily Right then, that's pretty much the whole rifle disassembled, so what I'll do is I'll get the parts cleaned up and then bring you back when we're ready to rebuild the rifle. Right then, I've given the parts a little clean up and we're ready to start the reassembly. We're going to do it in reverse order, so we're starting off with the valve. First thing we're going to do is drop the firing valve in the end there. And just push it home nice and gently, seating it against the brass face. Next thing we're going to do is take our valve return spring. Drop it in the end there, and then put the cap over the top. Just giving it a little push, just to get it started, as it is under spring tension. You can adjust the amount of valve return spring pressure by loosening and tightening this back cap here, but I've always found it best just to do it all the way in. But next we're just going to put a small amount of silicon grease around these o-rings here. The one in the end there I've already done. Unfortunately I don't have the o-ring sizes for you but there are plenty of people that sell full kits for the R10 on eBay and other places so if you did need an o-ring a full kit for the R10 is quite easy to find and fairly inexpensive. Next we're going to screw this back piece on. This doesn't need to be done up all the way as if you do it up all the way it covers part of the transfer port hole. So what I like to do is just get it to roughly sort of there-ish and then put the hammer tube back over and make sure that the two pieces are nice and aligned you can see there that we're pretty well aligned so we can leave it as is so we'll put this part to one side and we'll bring back the top block and the first thing I'm going to be putting back on is the barrel getting it in there lining up the transfer port to where it needs to be in the end. What we can also do is just drop the transfer port in, pushing it down nice and firmly just to make sure that the barrel is in the right place and then we can do up these two grub screws with a 2mm allen key. Just making sure that the transfer port is still nice and aligned, which it is. Next up with the transfer port aligned we're just going to put our thumb over it and we can bring back the magazine latching pin. The magazine latching pin just slides through that hole there. So not the outermost hole in the block but the one right next to it. Slide that down and then we'll put the ball and the spring back in this hole here. So I have put a little bit of lithium grease over the ball just before it goes in. So it's just got a little bit of grease over it and that helps it stay in the hole, not popping out. And then we can just put the spring back over the top, like so. Next up we can slide the plastic pieces back in the block. So this part goes in first, goes up flat side, or thick side to the front, and flat side down. So push that back in the block. We're not going to be pushing this all the way home yet, as we do need to put the two halves together before we do that. So we're just going to get them sort of there-ish and then we're going to bring the pallet probe back reinstall that again not pushing it all the way home but to roughly there we do need to put the banjo bolt on first though so I'll bring it back slightly rotate the banjo bolt so it's in sideways 
and then using some tweezers just rotate it so that it's facing the right way and we can slide the pellet probe over the end of it. Like so. Then we'll drop the bolt in. Get the two pieces aligned and then we'll do that up using a two and a half mil Allen key. Doing that up nice and tight. So as you can see there, banjo bolts in the bottom can no longer rotate. And lastly we can add the spring and the ball bearing back to this hole here. So drop in the ball first and then the spring over the top. Again I did put a small amount of lithium grease over the spring and the ball and also the pellet probe. That just helps everything slide together nice and smoothly. Next up we can marry the two halves together so making sure that these two pieces here are aligned Flip that upside down, drop that over the top, and then holding the two pieces together, we can flip it over and reinstall this screw here. So that's one of these bolts. Drop that through. Give it a little wiggle to make sure it's installed right, or the bolt's gone in the hole. Then we can do that up with a 3mm Allen key. Once it's nice and tight, we can push the bolt and the two sleeves together, get them seated in the rifle like so. So the magazine window there you can see that the plastic part has covered both sides and is in position. Next up we can remove the bolt, or the bolt handle I should say, just with a 3mm allen key in the back there. We only need to do this to access a screw hole like so. There we have the screw hole in the bottom there exposed. So we can stick that to one side for a second and bring back the hammer assembly. So we're going to drop the hammer in the shuttle like so and then we'll align the two holes so that they're aligned with each other. Next thing we can do is drop this little dampener piece in the back there. Sort of a hammer spring guide or a little dampener to stop the spring rattling in the rifle. Next we'll put the hammer assembly back in the back of the rifle, push that all the way home and then from this side we can drop the pin in. So the pin goes in sort of this way up, so long flat side to the top, like so. Then in the back here, I don't think the camera is going to pick that up, but we can adjust the depth of this pin here in order to get the flat aligned with the grub screw hole in the back. I've got mine aligned there. I don't know how well the camera is going to pick that up, but you can see it with a naked eye or use a torch if you're struggling. Then we can put the little grub screw in the back. That's done using a 3mm Allen key. As you do the grub screw up, just give the pin a little wiggle to make sure that it's seating correctly on the flat. Then when it's when you're happy, just do it up nice and tight. Now you can adjust the depth of this pin. If it's too far up the trigger won't latch properly and if it's too far down it can cause you trigger problems. But that's not a problem when the rifle's fully rebuilt. It's quite easy to get in the back here. Just loosen that screw a little, pull this pin up or push it down and get it to exactly where it needs to be. Next up we're going to be putting the hammer weight and the hammer spring back. So that just drops in the back there like so. And with that over the top we can put back the back cap. So the back cap does have a way up so the larger hole for the screw it's got a small one at the top and a large one at the bottom. You just put that in the back there, push it down nice and firmly, get the back aligned Then from the top we can reinstall the screw. So that's this screw here and we're going to be putting that in with a 3mm allen key. Pushing the back cap down nice and firmly and then tightening the screw up. Once that's done we can drop the trigger back over the top, so the trigger with the two bolts there. 
get that aligned and then do these two screws up with a 3mm allen key. Turn that up nice and tight. Next up we can put the bolt back in the back there and again doing that up with a 3mm allen key. I'm going to get the bolt position roughly right for now and then want the once the rifle's back in the stock, we'll make sure that the bolt handle isn't hitting the stock itself. But just make sure that the rifle still fires as it should and the trigger is working correctly, which this one still is. If we needed to change anything at this point, we could just get a Allen key down in the hole there through the centre, loosen that pin off pull it up or down with just a set of pliers or you could take the trigger off if you wanted to and readjust it although our position is fine next up we can just put this back cap back on just doing that up hand tight there's the block belt back up we can stick that to one side and we'll bring back the front block first thing we're going to do is install the little brass cap over this part here Firstly, we're just going to drop the ball bearing in the hole and then reinstall this little cover piece here. I have already put a little bit of silicon grease around the O-ring, so we'll do that up with a 12mm spanner. Get that nice and tight. And then the top piece here, the bottle connection, can go on the top of that. And again, I have put a little bit of silicon grease around this O-ring already. We can get to about there, we'll align the Delrin piece and just push it down. And then continue to screw on the brass piece, doing that up nice and tight with a 22mm spanner. This does need to be done up tight as we don't want this undoing as we either undo the bottle. So just make sure that that's nice and tight. You do have to make sure this part is done up nice and tight, although it does need to be aligned so that the flats are aligned with the side of the block and that the, this little nub here is at the top. So one of the pointy parts of the hex needs to be at the top and that's just so that this part here goes over without any interference. So just make sure that that's properly aligned when you put it back together. Next thing we can do is drop in these little cover or blanking bolts here like so, one in the front there, one in the back. And we're going to do that up nice and tightly with just a flat bladed screwdriver. Next up we'll put the gauge back in, so the gauge just screws into this back hole here. Getting it tightened onto the o-ring. And then using an adjustable spanner, we're just going to Move the gauge round until it's aligned. So I like mine in that alignment. With that done, we can put the regulator back in. So first thing I'm going to do is just add a small amount of silicon grease to both of these O-rings. So with a little bit of silicon grease over it, install the reg in the back there. Pop in the O-ring in, and then screwing it in nice and tight. And tight will do. But there we go. So that's the two blocks complete, we can bring back the back half of the rifle, gently push the front half over, and then put in the cap piece over the top of that. Getting that fished in there, and then using a 5mm allen key, we'll just do this bolt up in the front nice and tightly. Like so. This front block does rotate slightly, so you can get it aligned with your stock when you put your stock back on. And lastly, we can put the stock attachment back on. So it just screws in there like so. We could have put this on before. It would have made it a little easier to do up, but that's not a problem. We can just use a adjustable spanner to get that done up nice and tight. The only other thing we forgot to put on is a little cap that goes in the top here. So it just screws in nice and simply. We can do that up using a flat bladed screwdriver, like so. Next thing to do, as the rifle is still out of the stock, we need to gas the rifle up, make sure that there's no leaks, and we also need to check the power. 
because we've put a new reg in, the reg pressure is likely not going to be exactly the same as the old regulator. So we need, just need to check that to make sure we're still under the sub 12 foot pound limit. So I'll put a few shots over the chronograph, get the hammer spring set. We obviously just take the back cap off here to adjust the hammer spring. Just adjusting this part here. So I'll get these power set then we'll get the rifle back in the stock. Right then, so I've set the power, we're running about 11 and a half with JSB heavies, so we're nice and under the sub 12 foot pound limit. We did have to adjust the hammer spring, there was a slight difference between this reg and the old one, but that was easily done by removing the back cap, adjusting the hammer spring and then putting it back on. I'm not sure what exactly the standard BSA regs are set to, but this new Humor one is set to around 90 bar. And that should be plenty for a short barrel 177 rifle. Last thing we can do is put it back in the stock. Now to do that I'm going to degas the rifle. It's always easier to get these rifles back in the stock with the, with the bottle removed. So just unscrewed it a few turns. I'll dry fire it a couple of times. We can unscrew the bottle. And I'll bring back the stock. And we'll put the rifle back in the stock. So, bring the action over. Get that aligned nicely. And then putting the bolt back in the bottom there. With that done, we can reinstall the bottle. So the last thing we can do if we need to is readjust the position of the bolt probe. So using a 3mm Allen key, just loosen that off, in it to where it wants to be. Sort of there-ish, there's a nice amount of gap between the stock and the bolt. Doing that up nice and tight. So there we have it there. And that's pretty much the R10 all put back together, finished. In future videos what we're going to be doing is tuning the rifle, so putting a lightened hammer in it, a stronger hammer spring, and doing some other, other bits and pieces to it. And that should just improve the consistency of the rifle and make it nicer to shoot. But the rifle is all put back together now and ready for a test. What I'll do is I'll test the rifle over the weekend and report back any sort of changes to consistency or accuracy that we see in the rifle. I'm pretty sure we'll get a few extra shots out of it, but it'll be interesting to see if anything else changes. Right then, so I've managed to give the rifle a good test over the weekend and made sure that everything is working exactly how it should. The regulator itself worked flawlessly, and I was really quite happy with the results. The actual accuracy of the rifle didn't change much. It was a very accurate rifle before we put the Humor Reg in. It's a very accurate rifle after. The main benefit from fitting the Humor Reg was number one, the consistency, and number two, the slight improvement in shot count. So what I'll do is I'll put a pair of shot strings on the screen now so you can see what I mean. The standard BSA regulator worked quite well, although we did have a fair amount of reg creep in that regulator, which obviously wasn't ideal. No such problem with the Humor Reg though, the Humor Reg performed exactly how it should have done, with a very low extreme spread. And as for shot count, we did see a small improvement. We went from about 85 shots on average from a 200 bar fill with the standard BSA regulator to around 100, 105 shots with the Humor one. The main improvements to shot count and efficiency are going to come when we actually put the lightened hammer and the stronger spring in the R10. That's going to push the shot count way up and make sure that we're getting the best results that we can from the Humor Reg itself. But that's going to about do it for this one guys, so thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.